This tutorial will show you how to make a GCP architecture diagram, which is a diagram that visualizes how an organization plans to use or uses Google Cloud Platform's computing services. Making a cloud architecture diagram like this one is great for a few reasons. It can help you plan for and implement changes to the services you're using, or it can give you a way to explain the technical details of your GCP implementation to non-technical stakeholders within your organization. This example diagram was created with Gliffy, which is an easy-to-use app available in Confluence, Jira, and online. You can learn more about Gliffy through the info linked in the upper right, or you can find links to start a free trial in any of our apps via this video's description. So, I'm going to start to make a new diagram based on Google's best practices for a mobile games backend running on the Google Cloud platform. To do that, I'll go to File, New, and from this intro window, I'm going to select Network Diagram. This preloads some of the shapes I'll want to use later, like mobile devices. But in order to load in the specific Google Cloud icons, I'll need to go to More Shapes in the lower left here and check this box. This preloads all the shapes for the different Google Cloud services that I will need to use here in the side panel. But before I start dragging all these icons for the services I'll be using, I like to lay out some of the structure for my architecture diagram first. First of all, you'll have some things in your diagram happening within Google Cloud and some things happening outside it. So I'm going to use the shape tool to draw a rectangle and type to label this Google Cloud. From these two menus, I can stylize both the shape itself and the text inside it. So I'm going to add this text above, make it bold, and then I'm going to stylize this shape as well. I want to give it no stroke and a light blue color. Great. And then I can just drag and drop this around the canvas as I need. Next, I'm going to be adding a lot of shapes and service icons on top of this. So I'm going to jump to the Layers panel here in the toolbar and add a new layer to keep things super organized. You can double click to rename these layers as well. Now on this new layer, I'm going to have my mobile games backend running here on App Engine. This is one of their computing products, so I can toggle through these to find the computing group. And here's App Engine. I'll drag and drop this onto the canvas, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here. Now I want to add some details, so I'm also going to draw another rectangle and add some copy inside it. and stylize this copy. And then I'm gonna stylize the rectangle as well. I personally don't like a stroke. And then I wanna overlay it here on the icon. So I'm gonna put it on top of that icon and then use this button up here to send it to the back. Tweak that a little. There we go, I like how that looks. So I'm going to select both of these by holding Shift and clicking on both of them. And then I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut Command G to group them. You can also do that up here in the toolbar. This way they move around together. It's a group, super easy to use. And I'm gonna keep that in the middle here. From here, Google recommends that I organize my game's database, operations, and analytics in their own groups. So I'm going to jump back to my base layer and add some additional rectangles in here to keep those groups organized. Okay. 
I'm liking how this is looking. Now, within each of these, we're gonna have some services that support that function. I'm going to check my layers panel to make sure I'm in the right spot. And then I'm going to drag and drop the icons for each of those services onto my grid. So in this case, operations, I'm going to have things like error reporting, monitoring, and the logging service. Let's get those added in. Now, one thing, I don't know where these fit within here, so I'm gonna use Gliffy's nifty search function up here to search for our monitoring shape first. And this looks like the correct thing, so I'll drag that in here, label it monitoring, and I'm gonna scale this down as well. Let me repeat this for the other services we'll be using and get those into their appropriate spaces. All right, so you can see I'm kind of running out of room here, and there are these green lines appearing. That's because I have this show grid and show drawing guides toggled on in my toolbar. It's a super helpful way to make sure you keep everything organized. So I'm gonna give this part of my diagram a little more breathing room, and I'll keep using those grids to keep everything nice and neat. Now, one other thing we need to consider is that we're going to have users who need to access the game and everything here in Google Cloud. So I'm gonna scroll down to my network diagramming shapes and find that mobile device icon. I'm gonna change its color and scale this down. And I want multiple of these devices just to make it super clear that we're gonna have multiple devices interacting with all of this. So I can select it and use Command D to quickly duplicate it. And all these devices are gonna go through a load balancer before they interact with this game engine. So let's add that last piece as well. Great, so I think we're done adding all of the services in here at a high level. And now it's time to draw in the connections that show how all of these elements interact with one another. To do that, I'm going to use the connector tool up here and you can see all these connection points when a green circle appears. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in a bunch of our connection points to get started. And you can click Edit Line Properties here to add an endpoint to a line to show how that relationship is working. Now with the mobile devices, we're gonna have two-way information flowing through that load balancer, so I need to add an arrow to each side of these lines. Awesome, I'm gonna continue drawing in these connections to show that flow of information. And when you have a spot where you'd rather a label be above or below something, you can change it right here. And that just keeps things nice and neat. All right, 
Now that I'm done drawing these connections throughout the diagram to make it really clear how information is flowing at a high level, we are ready to show this diagram for some feedback. It's a great idea to share your diagram with your team or a peer to get that type of feedback and make sure you didn't miss anything. Think of it like spell check, but for a visual. So I'm going to go ahead and save this diagram. and then I can share it with my teammates. With Gliffy, you can add automatically updated links in tools like Slack or Trello so that as you make updates, your teammates won't accidentally reference any outdated information. That's everything you need to know. If you haven't yet, be sure to sign up for a free trial of Gliffy via the link in this video description or check out more of our video tutorials. You will be a diagramming pro in no time.